the devil is not happy because why will the devil not be happy? He will not be happy because he operates by blinding people. He wants you to think that he's the one responsible for your loss so that you keep binding him in prayer and keep falling for him when he comes to tempt you. He wants you to look for something to blame, you know, so that you will not know that you are the problem. Someone went to fast, a brother in the Lord, turned his back. He had a problem with fornication. And he loved the Lord so much. So he said, okay, I'm going to take a fast. And he fasted for seven days. Crying unto the Lord. Take away lust from me. You know, because you've been taught that the way to overcome lust is to pray and then magically lust will disappear. No scripture teaches that. Are we together? So, <laughs> after the end of the fast on the seventh day, one of his friends, who is a sister in the Lord, brought food for him. So, okay, let me bring food for you to break your fast. And after he was done eating, after the body regained its strength, fellowship continued. He ended up sleeping with the sister, having a great time of fellowship. And then when he was done, he began to weep. Hmm. Are you seeing how full belly came with strength for fornication? Lost his appetite. You think, oh, if I just run away from women, then my lust will die. No. You can stay on your own and you'll be sleeping with women every single day. Because it's a tin of the heart. It's inside there. Me, I'm a prayer man. Even if a woman is naked, I will not do anything. Okay. Glory, <laughs> you, will, you will explain to us. <laughs> but there will be no evidence. <laughs> Me. <laughs> oh God, I'm mercy. We used to have brothers in those days. They would say, them apostles of fire. <laughs> that even a woman like, let's have been naked. She will tell the woman, is this this thing? Okay. <laughs> Until we saw one of them visit one of our sisters in the Lord. May God take the glory. <laughs> May God have mercy. No, my friends know what I'm talking about. We say, brother, this evangelism is becoming too much. Mm. Every time we close from church, we will trek, trek, we will run to that woman's house, that lady's house. We say, brother, we all have a passion for soul, but your own is becoming too much. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't hear until after one month, we now heard bro coming to say, bro, put me in prayers. <laughs> I am falling, I am falling. I love you, the Bible tells you to flee because even the Bible doesn't trust you. <laughs> yes. We don't know whether the fact that you've prayed like this, we don't know whether you've overcome it. So just run. Let's not even find out. Out together. I saw a video I shared to a group of my brethren where we are in our cell group and we're laughing of someone who is fasting. Now that's the that's a typical example of what lust can do to him, an appetite, strong appetite. So the person was making this funny skit of how a lot of people, you know, are this fasting season. So there's this guy making eba for himself and he sits down and he prays. He checks the time. It's 11.50. It's 11.40. He meditates. He meditates. checks the time. It's 11.45. He sits down, sits down. When it was 11.59 and then the seconds were counting, he already molded eba and was... <laughs> As soon as it was 12, he threw his phone and started eating. That's what, you see, appetite not controlled can make a man a slave. Oh my God. Have you ever seen someone who is addicted before? You pity them. A, an heroin addict can sleep with you even on the road just to get money to what? To quench that addiction, that hunger. The body has become addicted to it. You see, I told someone, I say, the thing you feel as hunger in your belly 
is actually addiction. Your body is addicted to food. It's addicted to it. It needs it to survive. Your body will trouble you until you respond to it. You see? Lord have mercy. So, we've now discovered that there is an economy man that Satan has been exploiting from the dawn of time. And that economy is man's appetite and man's strong desire. You see, even curiosity can become an appetite. When you begin to study what appetites are, you discover that even your curiosity. Many people became addicted to pornography because of curiosity. People started smoking because they were curious. Let me, let me see how it feels. So there are many appetites in man that Satan, as long as it's an appetite, Satan can exploit it. Satan can create lust out of it. The most, there's someone who we prayed for one time that God delivered. Her problem was that she was eating dust or something like that. She was addicted to it. When it becomes an appetite that has no control over, that's why one of the fruit of the spirit is control over yourself, not over the spirit, over yourself. Because lust takes away control over a man's self. It takes it away. So when you find a lustful person, you discover that their will is weak. I will not. That will there is always weak. The same one that says, I will not go to the house. You'll find him there tomorrow. So the will of a man who is a slave of loss is always weak. I will do this. They cannot stand. You can even begin to notice it from the simplest things around them. They cannot stand on their will. Number two, you discover that there are not people who are devoted. A lustful man cannot be devoted. He's always neither here nor there. He starts today, he stops tomorrow. He's, you know, that is why Satan is exploiting all his appetite. Because there is no devotion to concentration. Why Satan, you know, would make sure that person who is, who has a loss that is uncontrollable, doesn't know the way of devotion, is so that they cannot build their will. That's why I told you earlier that one of the ways to overcome loss is suffering. If you can stay in suffering and not back away, it's easier for you to build your will. So you tell yourself, I will not sleep with this woman or sleep with a woman. And no matter what your body wants to do, if it wants to die, because your body will revolt. Your bodies, the hormones are moving, but your will is strong. And you discover that when you fail to grant the desire of lust, you fail to feed that hunger, you fail to feed that hunger, you fail to feed that hunger, it's like your body. Your body will react, will react after four days and you've not given it food. Your body will now start trying to manage on its own. So the hunger will now reduce. At day six of your fasting, you, you find strength. The hunger will reduce. Then at some point, your body will begin to die away. Because it's not fed. So what you find as the hunger people, you know, experience when they are fasting, it's not actually hunger. It is psychological addiction. It is the war of the mind. So when you don't tell yourself you are fasting, you can stay till 4 o'clock without food. But the moment you say, I'm fasting, that body doesn't want you to put it under, it just, just, let's freestyle. But don't put me under government. Don't put a law over me. Your appetite for internet can also become a lust. You tell yourself, okay, I will not touch my phone till evening today. You now discover that you've, you've been a slave to phone. That's when you discover. You see yourself looking at the phone. You go like this. Are you a lunatic? <laughs> That's what addiction can make you into. After some time, you will unconsciously pick the phone up. It's like someone who likes food so much. He says, I'm fasting. He doesn't know when he eats food. After he's eating, he now remembers he was fasting. Right. Yeah. 
So it's actually a strong appetite that rules all together so facts about lust that you should know number one lust is an appetite number two lust thrives on lawlessness lust is an appetite a very strong appetite number two this appetite thrives on lawlessness number three this appetite grows as you feed it so you have to be committed to feeding it daily for it to grow whatever you feed becomes strong and whatever becomes strong inside you since it is inside you already has a percentage of your person is inside you this is what talking about is not outside anger is inside the man but if that anger is constantly fed, that anger now has a personality in that person. So for you know, you can now say this person is an angry person. You now give the anger a personality because that anger has a large part of his life. This person is a liar. The lie that started as just choosing the right option. Meanwhile, lie thrives on running away from responsibility. If you are a person, who can stand by what they do, you will not fall victim to lies. Whether good or bad, you can stand by what you do. But if you are someone who likes deferring responsibility, you like running away from responsibility, you will find yourself lying. You will, you will begin to live in lies. Do you, have you not seen people who lie about even the, the thing that there's no repercussion? They just lie about everything. It's an insecure oppression that tries to escape any form of responsibility or accountability. A lie is not accountable to anybody, anyone. Whenever you try to call a liar to book, they will look for everything to make sure that they become addicted to that feeling of escaping danger through lies. You see? So as it is fed, it becomes stronger. Look at our lives now. What have you fed constantly? You think you are free from drinking. Tell yourself you won't drink. Then that's why you will know that there's another personality that has a very large share over your being. Meanwhile, like I told you, I said, what one of the core things Yeshua came to bring is freedom. This is called freedom. Because the average man is not free. Freedom. So, loss is an appetite that grows when it is fed. Now, the fourth thing you must know is that lost love atmospheres that helps it thrive. Lost loves atmospheres. If someone is a fornicator, naturally that person can easily create an atmosphere for his lust. If someone is a liar, naturally that person can create an atmosphere for his lust. If someone is um, contentious, naturally they can create an atmosphere for their lust. Before you know they began a quarrel, you'll be wondering how this thing got to this point. It's inside the person. So, when you begin to observe people and you look at the atmosphere they easily create, you can tell what's operational within them. I tell you the truth. If you, if you become master of this thing, I'm telling you, you can spot Satan, even your friends. Yes. You can find Satan, even your own best friends. You will find something and say, this one is Satan inside you that is doing this. They will be offended because they are foolish. They don't know what is happening. Because... A fool will hate knowledge. So love loves atmosphere. I mean, lust loves atmospheres. Number five, lust loves secrecy. I'll tell you why lust loves secrecy. You see, lust wants to be holy unto you. Lust loves to be a possession. 
A holy thing is a thing that is not trespassed. A holy thing is a thing that is separated unto only one person. Lost wants you to worship it. Lost wants you to separate yourself only for it. So lost loves, thrives in secrecy. Most of these coordinated billionaires, you, you know, you love celebrities. If you see what they do in secret, the Bible says these things are unspeakable. Shouldn't be even spoken. Then lastly, lost loves camouflage. There are some people that provides the perfect alibi, the perfect excuses for their lost. They always provide reasons why, you know, you know, this thing is, is, is our family problem. You know, they just look for any camouflage. Don't worry, just accept me the way I am. God loves all of us like that. Okay? God loves all of us. The same God that came to transform us. He, he loves us. Yes, come as you are, but don't remain as you are. Because if you remain as you are, you will become a problem to us. <laughs> I've seen certain pastors in this life. Oh. After service, they pick one person from choir, one person from Osha, and those ones will be strengthening them through the night. And they don't say anything bad in it. Prophets and pastors who pimp their members. You will not know that Papa is having a great time with all the girls in the church. Until you as a young brother now goes close to one of them. You now see Papa now telling you, you love fornication. You need to, no, he's afraid of his secret being leaked. Because if one of those girls fall in love with you, they will now open text message and you will see God's choice servant. <laughs> Someone say God's choice servant. God's choice servant in, in, in inside chat. He's now the Indaboski Bahusa. <laughs> oh, God have mercy. Ah, ah. La Masai Lokaba. So, if you see those kind of people, their gospel is very liberal. They stand for nothing on the pulpit. They always provide the common flag of, oh, don't worry, let's just act, let's accept ourselves like that. We are not perfect. I go see, man. We can be perfect. How do you become perfect? When you have control over your soul, your spirit, and your body. That's the control that the Lord gives a man. You are accountable. You've advanced. You can say yes, and it's yes. You can say no, and it is no. And so, I am maybe on Sunday, God willing, I'll tell you about the power of the Most High. What it means for the highest spirit to come upon a man. You will discover that that spirit is not tyrannic. That thing you call the lordship of the Lord over your life is a lordship to advance you. It's for you. It's for your own gain. His commandments, his leadings are for your benefit. It's for, for your benefit. When he passes you through the fire, it's one of the ways he matures your soul because your soul has to advance. Whenever you are in an earthly relationship and there's too much emotion, there will be a problem very soon. Too much uncontrolled emotion. You didn't call me boo-boo bear, an old man like you. Hello, sir, mama. When I wake up and my wife see my red eye, she knows. I'm not a preacher of love. <laughs> I don't know if you grew up with the kind of dad I will grow up with. Have you ever told your dad, Daddy, I love you? Hey! Hey! Me even thinking of itself is weird. True love is expressed. They rough you so that you can face the hardship of life. That thing you thought they were doing to you that was wickedness was actually preparing you for a wicked world. A wicked world. 
Oh, I'm independent. My parents maltreated me, but now I'm in. No, sir. They made you. That thing, you, they made you. If you do not thank them when you become older, then you are not wise. Hello, thank you for watching the video and I hope it was a great asset to you. And I hope it was also very useful then. If you haven't commented, if you haven't liked it, please do that. And for more videos, kindly subscribe to our YouTube channel to get more videos. God bless you.